New Zealand will conclude differently. I proudly oppose this bill on behalf of the ACT Party, Mr Speaker. Maureen Pugh. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I too stand uh, with great disappointment today to speak to the Crown Minerals Petroleum Amendment Bill in its third reading. And this is, and I support Mr Seymour, this is a sad day for Taranaki. It is a sad day for New Zealand, a sad day for our democracy, and it's certainly a sad day for our country's economic future. I thought this government was going to be the main meal, New Zealand first and Labor, with a side of Greens. But what we've actually got is a salad with absolutely no substance inside of it. If I was Winston Peters now, I'd be wondering what on earth I'd signed up for in this, um, with this Crown Minerals Bill before us today. Because it's clear that this is a, a Jacinda Ardern and James Shaw show. And all poor old Winston Peters has done is been relegated order, to order, the sideshow. Order, show. order. Member will resume his seat. Yes, sir. Um, I want to remind member, the members of um, Speaker's rulings um, 121, 4 and 5. Um, at, at, the, at the third reading, one must discuss the bill as it emerged from the select committee. The member hasn't started. She's had her introduction and she'll now address the bill. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Uh, for the Taranaki region, in relation to the Crown Minerals Petroleum Amendment Bill, um, I feel that uh, the Prime Minister is like the Grinch who stole Christmas. But unfortunately, under this government, we won't even have a lump of coal to be able to give to the naughty order, children. Order. Second warning. Address the bill or I will terminate the member's speech. One of the risks, I'd like to run through some of the risks to New Zealand from the passing of this bill today, Mr Speaker. And as James Shaw eloquently put it, the reputational damage to New Zealand um, from, from the passing of this bill is a chronic shame for us. It is part of the reputation that, that this country has built up over many years. Another one of the consequences and the risks that we face from this bill is the consistency that business needs. It needs a, a firm and level playing field for the years ahead where they have to plan and evaluate their long-term investments. So we need great big long lead-in times. And unfortunately, the uncertainty of this passage of legislation that is going to be created across the investment sector is going to damage our um, our reputation and that consistency that business needs. Now, the other risk from this bill is to the investors. Now, investors, they're probably our biggest risk of all. We need that major investment coming here into New Zealand. And a classic example is the result of this bill passing through this House was a decision from Methanex who was the second major natural gas consumer, they called a halt to their major investment of a $100 million expansion to their plant in Taranaki. The other major investment that we have seen withdrawn as a result of this legislation is the balance agronutrients shelving a billion-dollar rebuild of their Kapuni factory. Now, Mr Speaker, this type of legislation, this Crown Minerals Amendment Bill, is the, uh, it creates uncertainty in the sector. And this is the type of damage that we are seeing. And that is before the bill has even passed through and become legislation. So I talked to the loss of income as a consequence of this bill. And we've heard the Crown revenue alone, $7.9 billion. So as, a, as an example of what that type of Crown revenue could have created here in this country, it could have built all of Auckland's light rail. It could have built all of Waterview. It could have built all of Transmission Gully. It could build the new Dunedin Hospital. Order. Member will resume her seat. I'm, I'm now going to read to her um, uh, 
1214, members must confine themselves to the general principles of the bill as it emerged mm -hmm. from the committee. Uh, 1217, members must confine themselves to the main purposes and contents of the bill. They must not deal at length for the matters not provided for in the bill. The member hasn't actually discussed either the purpose or the content of the bill in the half the time that she had available. The member's speech is terminated. Well, I, Jean Prime. Mm -hmm. uh,